Do you struggle with brush styling your curls? If you're feeling frustrated by this popular styling technique and you just can't seem to get it to work for you, I'm here to help. I've compiled seven of the most common problems that you all submitted to me that you experience when you're brush styling and I'm offering various solutions that should help you out. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love doing simplified step-by-step -step tutorials and really helping you problem solve with your curls. That way everyone can achieve healthier hair. And be sure to check the description box down below for timestamps if you need to skip to your specific problem, but I recommend watching all the way through because I do sprinkle in tips and tricks for all of the problems throughout the whole styling routine. So I've already applied both my curl cream and my gel to clean hair. I like to apply both the cream and the gel before I brush style because I like getting more frizz control and more definition because if you're combing your gel through, you're going to get more coverage and it's going to coat every single strand. Whereas if you just apply your curl cream first and then do brush styling and then try and glaze it in, you're not going to get as even of a coverage as a gel. You're really just getting on the surface or you're just scrunching it in on the ends and you're not really coating every single hair. Now that can give you a more fuller look. So if you are looking Looking for more fullness and volume then maybe try that just do your cream first then brush style and then apply your gel it just depends on the look that you're going for but if you really struggle with frizz like I do and you have lots of frizz that just pokes through from the inner layers then definitely try applying your gel before you brush style highly recommend using a strong hold gel because if you are struggling with frizz or if your curls are not lasting it's probably because your gel is too light of hold so if you're struggling with that definitely try a stronger hold gel. So the first problem that I heard from you all the most when it comes to brush styling is not knowing which type of brush is right for your hair type. There's lots of different styling brushes and I'm just gonna show you quite a few of them. The first brush is not a styling brush. This is a wet brush. This is meant for detangling and distributing product. You cannot brush style your hair with something like this. I mean, you could try, but your hair is just probably going to flip through. You see how much space is between these bristles and they're very flexible. This is really just for or distributing product. That's what I use this for. I get this on Amazon. It's super affordable. I use it to comb my deep conditioner through. I comb my curl cream through. Even my gel sometimes works great at that. doesn't cause breakage because it's super flexible. But this is not going to apply any tension on your hair, so it's not going to be used for styling. However, brushes that are used for styling are ones like this. So I've got the Denman brush. This is a Briogeo vegan bore bristle brush. This one's much more dense. And then I have a Tangle Teaser brush, which this one is actually dual purpose. It's great for both detangling and for styling. So this is a good option if you just need one brush. So the thing that you wanna look for when it comes to a styling brush is a brush that has a rounded edge. Look at the edges of these brushes. You see how there's an edge to them? There's that round shape, especially the Denman brush. This one's especially created for brush styling. But that round edge is what's going to create that tension on our hair to create a ringlet. This one, you do have a slight round edge, um, but this one is definitely good at brush styling. All three of these are great. Also, it's great if it has that like slippery texture, so that way it's not gonna create too much tension that can tug on your hair. So this has a smooth plastic on all of these. So the more dense the bristles of the brush, the more tension it's going to apply on your hair, which then leads to a more ribbon-like effect on your curls. And the more space that your bristles have, the more separated your curl clumps are going to be. So for low density hair, you might want something that creates more separation, like a Denman brush. You can remove the rows of these. You just slide this red piece out and you can actually remove rows that could give you more separation. Whereas a brush like this one, has very dense bristles. They're very close together. There's actually two layers of bristles. One of them has like those short little dense, kind of like a boar bristle, whereas the other ones have the longer ones with those little balls at the end. So it's very dense compared to this one is much more separated. Now this I think is the nine row brush from Amazon. You'll have to find the one that is right for your hair length and your hair density. It just depends on the look that you're going for. So although you can create more fullness by having more separated curl clumps, if your hair is very fine, you might need a denser bristle brush. So a lot of you mentioned that one of your main struggles is the hair just falls right out of the brush. And to me, that sounds like you're either not picking up enough hair, like you're not grabbing a big enough clump, or you just have super fine hair and you need a denser bristle brush like this one. If you are properly using this brush, your hair should not be falling out of a brush like this. If you are properly pulling the hair into the brush, it's getting down towards the base of the brush, it should not fall out. Where if you were using something like this and you had super fine hair, 
this might cause your hair to fall out of it. Now, this Tangle Teaser brush is nice because it actually has dual layers to it. This is the one for naturally curly hair. It does have those shorter bristles and the longer ones. So this does actually create more grab in the hair, which is nice compared to a regular Tangle Teaser brush. A denser bristle brush will also help with more scalp covering. So a lot of you mentioned that you struggle with your scalp showing when you were brush styling. This is going to help with that, especially if you create horizontal sections. It's going to cover the scalp a lot better because there's not as much separation happening. The only downside to a denser bristle brush is it can create more damage because there is more tension. So if you have damaged hair or very, very fine hair that's prone to breakage, or if you have bleached hair, I would avoid a dense bristle brush unless you're super careful with it because the more tension, the more breakage you could have. I like this vegan boar bristle brush though because the bristles are plastic, so they're not as harsh on the hair as a traditional boar bristle brush. So the Tangle Teaser brush is a a great in between. This creates more separation. This creates more ribbon like curls. This is a good in between. It's pretty dense, but it's not too dense and it doesn't create too much tension and the hair really does slide through very easily because it is all plastic. Now, another thing to consider is the length of your hair. If your hair is very short, you might want something like the Denman brush because this is going to be a little bit easier to create ringlets. The size of the brush is also important because if your hair is very short, you need a smaller brush to be able to actually create a ringlet. If you had short hair and you try to create a ringlet with something that's this big, you might only get one twirl out of it, which isn't gonna give you a full spiral. Something like this that's a lot smaller is going to be easier to use for very short hair. Or you could even go with a smaller brush. I know that Denman makes a brush similar to this, but it's even smaller. It's like a tiny boar bristle brush. That would be even more ideal if you have very short hair. So I did wanna show you a tip and demo this if you have very long hair. My hair is not super long, it's kind of medium length, but I did still wanna show you you can actually pinch the top of the hair. So once you get down a little bit, you can hold it out like this and then drag the brush down and that's gonna help just give you more control. Instead of trying to get your hand all the way to the end of your hair if it's very long, especially if your arms are kind of short, just pinching the hair in the center and then going through can help. You could do it in two sections, but that's just definitely gonna help if you have longer hair. Um, but if you have medium length hair, you can usually just do it in one swipe, but I still like to hold it sometimes because that just gives a little bit more control. So the next common problem that you all submitted when I asked what you struggle with when it comes to brush styling is hair getting tangled in the brush. The biggest cause of this is not properly sectioning your hair. You can see I have my hair sectioned. I like to apply my gel in sections, so I usually section it off after I apply my cream and before my gel, and then I can apply my gel more thoroughly. But when I create a section, I take my fingers like this and I go all the way across, and then my fingers meet in the back, and then I separate the hair, and I try not drop it when I'm separating. The cleaner the line, the easier it is to brush style because you're not gonna have hairs that are getting caught. Another thing that I do when I'm sectioning my hair is I try and pull the hair up when I clip it instead of leaving it like this. You see how this hair is getting down into this section? That could easily get stuck. So I just try and lift it up like this and then I clip it. I'm just using a claw clip from Amazon. If you're struggling with creating a clean section, you can take like a rat tail comb or any type of comb and try and do it that way. But the cleaner the sections that you pick up, the easier it's going to be to brush style. So when I'm picking up a section to brush style, I will usually pick up a vertical section. So by vertical, I mean it's going down like this. So if I were to grab a hair in the downward position, so see how my fingers are pointed down? This is a vertical section. So see how it's kind of flat? So the hair is at an angle vertically. I can hold my fingers like this. Whereas a horizontal section would be like this. See how this is angled this way? That's a horizontal section. Now I do still do these up in the top section and I'll show you that for scalp covering. But for the middle layers and the bottom layer, I do vertical sections. And I usually brush through it first. So I brush all the way at the root. I mean, not at the scalp, but at the root. So now I have this clean piece of hair to work with. So then I'm going to place the brush over my hair. So I'm just demoing with this Denman brush, but you can do this method with any of these brushes. I'm holding the brush in my right hand, I'm right-handed, and I'm going over my head and angling it downwards. I think this is where a lot of people get it wrong sometimes. I mean, you can do it like this, and it definitely works, but I like doing it this way if I want to create that ribbon-like effect. Then I'm turning the brush, so I'm making sure the brush is wrapping around at the edge of the brush applying some tension so there is some tension here but not too much and then going down the strand so i really only turn my wrist once 
So the ringlet's not perfect. My curls on the lower section are not perfect ringlets, so it's not gonna turn out perfectly, but the idea is just to smooth the hair and give it a little bit of that tension, that way it does spiral up better. So once I get to this side of my head, I'm still using my right hand and I'm just going like this. So see how my elbow is? So I'm gonna pull this hair that I haven't done yet away and just make sure I'm not grabbing it in the brush. I'm just being careful with it and I throw it to the other side. So I'm trying to keep the hair that I've done out of the way. Now you could also clip it up. If you wanted to clip it up between each uh, piece that you do, you could. I usually just clip up between each section. And if you were really struggling, you could clip up those sections. So I could completely isolate the piece that I'm working with if I was really struggling with grabbing the hair from other places. So over here, I didn't get as clean of a section. See how there's like a little hair that does actually belong down here? That could get caught in the brush, so I'm actually going to gently pull it down and I'm just gonna be careful around that area because I didn't have such a straight line here. Those hairs could get caught in my brush if I'm not careful. So then for my next section, I'm going to keep it clean. I usually do this about right here around my temples. And then I'm going in a straight line back and I'm also taking this finger and going around the back side of my head and my fingers are meeting right here. And I'm also kind of pressing against my head. So my finger's kind of dipping down in the back to make sure I'm actually grabbing that hair. Because sometimes when you go around the back, you might feel your finger kind of go over your hair. You need to make sure you're getting under it. That way you're actually grabbing the hair at the crown. And then I kind of just feel and make sure that it's somewhat straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. And again, before I clip the hair up, I'm going to make sure that I'm pulling it up out of the way on both sides. So now let's switch to the Tangle Teaser brush so I can show you how this one works. So the next common problem that I heard so many times from you all is knowing which direction to do your brush styling and which direction your curl naturally goes. This is really tough, especially if you have looser curls or waves, you probably can't really tell which direction because there isn't a direction. If your hair is looser, it doesn't actually spiral. So you're not gonna have a direction, so you'll just kind of have to play around with it or maybe brush styling is just not right for you. So see the way that the hair kind of bends in that direction. As long as it bends down, so it's hard to tell and you just need to test it. But I know that this hair does go away from my face because if I look at this first curl right here, see how it kind of goes back a little bit? then I can tell. Now right now it's not really curled at all. It's not even taking a spiral, but I'll show you when we actually brush it. So to go away from my face, I need to be turning my wrist like this, which is going to bend it over the brush in that direction. I'm gonna place it right here and I'm gonna create that bend right at the root, turn it to where now it's flat this way and then pull it down. This brush doesn't have quite as much tension. And then I usually do this little finger coil thing afterwards. That's one of those things that I didn't realize that I do, but I actually do that to help it actually curl. And your hair can even change directions. That's really common, especially if your hair is damaged or if you're still transitioning. And some people just naturally have a variation in curl pattern. It's totally normal. Our curls are not perfect. Your hair can change direction. I mean, this looks like it goes this way, but maybe it goes in the other direction as you go down the strand. That's okay. You just want to get some type of you know, spring in the hair after you brush style. Another thing that you might wanna consider is when was the last time you had a haircut? If your hair is just not springing up at all and it's just going straight, then you might be due for a haircut. So see how that kind of went a little bit wonky there? I think the hair definitely does change direction there. So let me try going towards my face. Oh yeah, definitely once I twirl it with my hand, it kind of falls into place. So that looks much better. So I don't even know exactly with my hair, with every piece of hair, I mean, my hair does kind of change direction. It's not all going away from my face and that's okay. A lot of these look to be going towards my face. See, now that I'm actually paying attention to it, I'm realizing that. Another thing to keep in mind, if you're picking up curls that belong to different curl families, and I call them curl families because it's like where the hair naturally groups together in clumps. If you're picking up hairs that go across different curl families, they're going to be going in different directions. So if you look at where your hair naturally separates, like I haven't brushed this at all. This is the natural clumping of my hair. That's like four clumps. If I try to make all of this go in the same direction, it's not gonna look as perfect, but I don't have time to be doing every single little strand, so I don't stress about it. I just go in which direction I think. Any type of tension is going to help the hair spiral, even if you're going in the wrong direction. So I still do it and it turns out fine. Now, if I were to actually pick these up and go in the exact direction, it would probably be more precise and perfect, but nobody has time to be doing these little tiny pieces. And plus they are not going to grab in the brush very easily if they're too small, your hair could just fall out. So 
make sure you're picking up a big enough piece. And also if you need to pay attention to which curl family that can help if you're really struggling getting your hair to spring up at all. And sometimes it's not very obvious either. Like this one doesn't curl very much. I can't really tell which direction this is going in. So I just brushed it through straight first so I can get a better look, but this hair doesn't really curl at the root. So I'm just gonna guess. I'm gonna go in this direction. Again, I'm going in a downward motion like this. That time I kind of wrapped around the handle, which helps a lot too. That's called um, brush coiling. And I just let it separate in the way that it wants to go. So let's dive into the next common problem. And this is also one of the most common problems that I heard from you all that you submitted. And that is when the hair just falls straight. So when you brush style, it just straightens out your hair and you can't get it to curl. So before we dive into that, let me just show you how I section this part. So I usually divide this in half horizontally. And that's because I like to take horizontal sections at the crown. So I'm sectioning it horizontally like that. So there are several reasons why your hair might be falling straight when you brush style. And one of the biggest reasons for this is your curls are just a looser curl pattern or you might just have wavy hair. As I mentioned before, brush styling is not for everyone. You can't create a curl pattern that doesn't exist naturally. Brush styling is meant to just enhance your natural curl pattern and give it more of a balance and help encourage it to go in the direction that it naturally goes. But you can't alter your natural curl pattern or you can't create a curl pattern that doesn't exist. But there's also some things that could be happening as to why your hair is going straighter when you know that it's actually a lot curlier without brush styling. One of the biggest reasons is your products are too heavy or maybe your gel is not thin enough, like it's too thick of a formula to where when you're brushing it through, it's just kind of straightening out. Or maybe you don't have enough water in your hair. I notice that a lot when I'm brush styling, if I don't have enough water in my hair, then I can end up with a straighter piece. It can also be due to the technique. Maybe you're not going in the right direction. That's one of the biggest things too to tell if you're not going in the direction of your natural curl pattern is it will just straighten out because you're trying to force it in the wrong direction. Another thing you can try is picking up a larger or a smaller section. You can try different size sections depending on your natural curl clumps. If you're picking up a section that's super large and it's falling straight, maybe try going with a smaller section. It could be because you're trying to force different curl patterns in different directions into one direction. You can also try altering the direction in which you're styling your hair. My hair naturally wants to be styled more upright. It just works better. So maybe adjust the direction in which you were styling your hair. If you're currently brush styling upside down, try right side up. You have to experiment with it. And if nothing else works, then brush styling could just not be right for you. Another thing to keep in mind if your hair is falling straight is maybe you're not applying enough tension you want to make sure that you are wrapping the hair around that edge of the brush. If you're just brushing your hair like this, like no curl just formed. That basically just made this piece go straight because I'm just kind of lazily brushing it. That's not doing anything. So by applying that tension to the hair, see how it kind of pulled the hair a little bit more? Look how much better that that just curled up. So if you want to save some time, I recommend picking up larger sections all at once and then separating them. That way you can just brush style an entire section at once. So I like to do this at the crown and this especially helps to create more scalp coverage. When I use a dense brush like this, it helps cover the crown better. I will just place the brush right here on this entire large section and go straight up. And that's pretty separated, but if I wanted to separate it more, I could take a comb but I would be mindful of using the comb because see all that just kind of pulled everything together that might expose the scalp a little bit. So maybe you want to keep it more of like a flat line of hair. And that's super quick. I just did that entire section all at once. You could do an even larger section depending on how big your brush is. So another common problem that you all said you struggle with, and I really struggle with this, is the lack of volume that can happen when you're brush styling and trying to maintain fullness and volume with brush styling. Brush styling definitely gives you lots of definition, but with that, sometimes you get less volume because you're doing a more precise styling technique. So it's really taming every hair, which results in less volume usually. Unless if you implement my volume techniques that I shared in a recent video, I can link it for you down below because I love mastering that definition and volume thing. So definitely check that out. There's lots of tips in there for low density hair. And I go into detail about styling techniques that really help maintain fullness while giving you definition. Another tip, if you're still getting hair caught in the brush is try I just combing through that entire section. I like to use the wet brush for this, but you could totally just use your styling brush. And that just helps kind of smooth everything out. So then you can more evenly 
pick up a section because your hair is not all like matted up. It's detangled, it's a lot smoother so you can more easily pick up a straight section. So I like to go ahead and create my part when I'm in this section too. So one of the solutions for achieving more fullness overall and not reducing the volume too much when you brush style is just pick up smaller sections. Now you're probably gonna need a denser bristle brush if you are gonna go with smaller sections because like I mentioned before, Sometimes if your section's too small, it might just fall right out of the brush. So I'm gonna use the Briogeo brush for this section just to demonstrate how you can achieve more fullness. So I'm going to pick up this small section, make sure it bends around the edge of this brush, and then glide it down. And because I left the hair a little bit more flat in the brush, I got a little bit of separation there. So see how there's kind of like two curl clumps happening right there? So I'm just gonna leave that, but if it was one tight ribbon, I would probably separate it with my fingers or just comb through it. So this is a wider, more flat section, so I know that I'm gonna get more separation with this because I'm keeping the hair flat. I'm not grouping the hair together. If I were to wrap it around the handle, see how now the hair is grouped together right there? That's really going to create a tighter curl clump, which maybe that's what you want, and you could do that towards the end if you want to maintain that fullness at the root. So it's a little bit more flat, more full, and then it gets a little bit tighter as you go down the strand. Another tip to ensure that you get more definition at the root and to also help with fullness is to make sure that you are curling your hair with the brush right at the root. So I usually place it as close to the root as possible without picking up other hair. And then I start that bend or that tension right at the root and then glide down. So a lot of you also mentioned that your roots get straightened out. That could be because you're brushing your hair at the root straight and then you're twisting it. Try doing that twisting motion closer to the scalp. Now here's what you could be doing which could be causing the straighter roots. Maybe you're brushing it like this. I just straightened out my roots and I also made them flat. That's going to make it kind of stick flat to my head. And then you're turning it. That's like four inches of hair right there that got straight. And then you turn it and now you just have a ringlet at the end and the top is straight. You see that? Now watch when I actually curl it right at the root. So I'm curling it right here. I'm only like an inch from my scalp. And heck, I could even wrap it around the handle. That's really gonna create definition at the root. And then glide down. And then I do that twirl with my finger just to help encourage that curl. And see that root curl that I got? I don't know if you can tell because my hair is dark. I definitely got more of a curl. So there's an actual bend right there at the root. I'm not sure if you can see. I think you can see there. Now it might be hard sometimes with a big brush like this, so maybe you wanna try the Denman brush because it's a little bit smaller. This is also gonna depend on your curl pattern. Some people just naturally don't have curl at the root and that's okay. So I could brush style this entire section at once. That's a pretty big curl clump. That's going to reduce the volume significantly and it's going to kind of stick to my head. So I'm just gonna create more separation with my comb or you can use your fingers and see how you're getting like four curls out of that now instead of like one and then you just scrunch it and it should encourage those curls to curl up. These curls actually go in a little bit different direction, so I need to do them separately, but I just wanted to show you how you can create more separation. Another way to create more fullness is to only brush style the top section, or maybe you only do like the bottom section and the top section, but you leave the middle section less clumped together and not brush styled at all. I definitely do that, especially if I'm in a hurry, that's a quicker method to do as well is you just do the top section or just do some face framing pieces, whatever you can do to help save time and also create more fullness. That way you're not brush styling every single curl on your head. So another tip for creating more root lift and not reducing the volume too much with brush styling is making sure that you are pulling the hair away from the scalp. So by that I mean, I'm not just brushing the hair like this and pulling it down. You see how that really just flattened it out. Instead, I'm pulling away from the scalp. So when I curl this hair, I'm lifting up. So it's directed up like this. And look how much more root lift that that gave. So much more. Another tip is to make sure you're scrunching right at the root. I'm just gonna wet my hands for this so I don't cause frizz. But I like to lift up like this and scrunch. We scratch the lengths of our hair, but we always forget about the root and it really helps to encourage curls and you get more volume. See all that lift that I got? Here's another good example of when you're just not angling the brush in the right direction and this really took trial and error for me. This piece in particular curls towards my head. And if I try and curl it towards my head just like this, it curls up okay, but not as good. Now watch when I actually angle my brush this way, so over my head and then pull it down. 
but I got a much better curl out of that. Instead of kind of angling the brush just down like this, that different angle really helps, especially with curls that kind of go in a different direction. This one curls towards my face and I just know that from practice. Same with this piece right here. This goes towards my face versus these, they go away from my face. So another tip for maintaining fullness at the scalp and not having too much of your scalp showing from all that clumping is to wet your hands and go underneath and gently shake out the roots. So I don't usually encourage fluffing the hair when it's wet because that can create frizz, but just sometimes that little bit of lift, just lifting the hair up off the scalp and I'm just separating it. So I'm creating more of that separation right at the scalp, whereas the rest of the hair is still brush coiled and clumped together. So I don't have to worry about that. It's really just the roots. So I'm just kind of going in and lifting up. I'm not shaking and causing too much frizz, but see how my fingers just kind of go right there. And that creates so much more scalp covering that way. This also helps kind of break up those sections. Sometimes you can really see those lines that you create. So this helps just to kind of blend the hair back together. And I definitely do this right at the crown to make sure the scalp is covered. If it's not, I will pick up a section of hair around where the scalp is exposed. I've showed this millions of times in videos. And then I'm going to use a dense brush like this one, create a horizontal section, flat horizontal too. A lot of you mentioned that you struggle with brush styling the back of your head. I definitely do too, but it's helped me a lot using that mirror so that way I can see. And then I just kind of brush style it all up and back and then it just falls into place. So that has helped me a lot. So the next problem we kind of already discussed, but a lot of you mentioned that your hair falls out of the brush. And I really think that you might need to try a denser bristle brush like this to make sure the hair is not falling out. And also make sure that you are pressing the hair all the way down into the brush. So instead of just kind of going on the surface like that, make sure that the hair is getting pulled all the way to the bottom of the brush, like the base of the brush, and it's getting wrapped around that edge with some tension and then it grabs so much better. So another one of the biggest problems that you all submitted is how time consuming brush styling is. Now that I cannot deny. It definitely does take more time to brush style, but the hope is that your curls are more defined so they're going to last longer. The more clumps and definition that you have, the longer your curls are going to last. Anytime that I just kind of lazily style my hair or I don't really put any effort into styling and I just kind of scrunch in some product, my curls never last. Like they look bad by the end of the day or by the next day. I really benefit from having that more precise styling technique. Now I know that's not for everyone, not everyone has time, but if you just style your hair once on the weekend, then maybe it'll last all week, that's the hope. That's usually what I do. So that's personally why I like to brush style, but I know that it is more time consuming. I also recommend trying out those techniques that I mentioned to make it faster where you brush style an entire section at once. So if you pick up a whole section around like your crown, especially is a good place to do this, brush that whole section up and back and then you can just separate it with a comb and that's so much faster. Or just doing the top section or just doing some face framing pieces. You don't have to brush style every single curl. That's gonna take too much time. A lot of times I just do the top section and I'm good to go. And then I have more fullness overall because the bottom section is more separated and the top is more defined. So here are my final results after this brush styling routine. I did use lots of different styling brushes, but I actually really like how it turned out. Typically, I would only use one brush while I'm styling, but I wanted to demonstrate the different brushes. I'm going to link all the brushes and other things that I used in this video linked in the description box down below. If you're looking for the right brush for your hair type, I would recommend checking out the blog post that I'll have linked down below because there I will summarize the benefits of each type and which one is best for which hair type. And I'll also summarize all of the problems and solutions that we talked about in this video. But overall, I think the Tangle Teaser brush is probably going to be your best bet just because it's the most universally beneficial brush. You can use it for both detangling and brush styling. And it does apply some tension, but not too much. So I don't think it would cause as much breakage as some of the other options. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments which one of these problems did you resonate the most with and which one did you find the most helpful if you would like for me to do a follow-up video on any of these problems or if you want me to do a whole series on different brush styling techniques definitely let me know because I will plan that out very soon and if you enjoyed this video I definitely think you should check out the one that I did recently all about how to brush coil it's a really cool styling technique that gives super defined curls that are very long lasting this routine lasted me four days where I only had to do it once a week and it lasted such a long time so I'm going to have that routine linked here on the screen and I will talk to you over there Bye, everyone.